it's probably an indicator of something deeply miswired in my psyche that I've thought to myself multiple times, man, I sure wish I used to be an alcoholic so that I could prove that step one of AA's program is a load of shit. Hell, you know what? I might have actually tried becoming an alcoholic just so I could quit if I didn't mind teasing Heath that way. But yeah, step one of AA's seven-step recovery program is, but God though. Right? It's a blanket statement that says it's literally impossible to quit drinking if you aren't religious. It's one of those statements that lends itself to empirical testing, and like all religious statements that do that, it fails the test consistently. There is no correlation between religiosity and addiction recovery. We'd have a lot more data to work with, of course, if AA would release their own recidivism rates. But in this instance, I feel like the fact that they won't is the only data point we really need. Anyway, but up to this point in my life, I've always seen two ways that you could explain this rule's existence in light of the fact that it's demonstrably untrue. The more cynical interpretation, of course, is to say that people at rock bottom are more susceptible to religious indoctrination and won't be able to fight you off as well. Now, if you're inclined to be more charitable, though, you can also look at it like the bloody volleyball that Tom Hanks talks to in Castaway. Right. A person who's tried and failed to quit drinking, especially a person who's failed repeatedly at that, might need an imaginary hand to hold. You know, the only way that they're likely to believe the person saying you can do this is if that person is lying about who you is in this scenario. So, you know, they tack on some God shit and they say no matter how insurmountable the goal might seem, our guy is omnipotent so he can handle it. Of course, even that more charitable interpretation, even if it's all the fucking way correct, would be insufficient to explain the first step because you can get all that shit without insisting on God belief. Right. You could just have that as one of the available menu items and still gain all the same benefits from it. Now, in the past, that's where I've left it intellectually because, let's face it, the fact that the charitable explanation just doesn't add up as well as the cynical one isn't usually in need of further review when we're talking about religious questions. But I've been thinking more and more about this since I quit smoking, and another possible factor occurred to me the other day. So, first of all, quick update. By the time you hear this, it will have been 10 weeks since my last cigarette. Thank you. Thank you. No, seriously, thank you, because if I hadn't done it in such a public way and if you guys hadn't been holding me to account and if so many of you hadn't reached out to help, I probably wouldn't have been able to do it. So thank you. And to be honest, like at this point, I'm so damn confident that like I'm saying it's been 10 weeks, even though I'm recording this motherfucker a week in advance. Right now, to be clear, this was not my first bout with addiction. I had a pretty substantial cocaine habit at one point in my life. But the thing about a hundred and fifty dollar a day coke habit is that as long as your income isn't significantly higher than one hundred and fifty bucks a day, that shit works itself out in payroll, right? I, I quit doing coke because I literally reached a point where I could not keep doing that much coke. If coke had cost five bucks for a pack of lines, I guess, you know, maybe things would have been different. But but the coke thing, too, that was a habit that I've been working on for a couple of years. The nicotine thing was three decades in the making. It, it would have been a lot easier for me to fail at that one. Well, hell, let me not get too cocky. It still would be a lot easier for me to fail at this one. And throughout it, I've, I've been trying to keep my eye open for what purpose God might have served in all of this. You know, I can't help but replay this whole nine-week ordeal and imagine what if I had been Christian throughout. Because, you know, to be perfectly honest with you, quitting to this point hasn't been as hard as I feared it would be. You know, the first couple of days were pretty miserable and I'm hardly all the way out of the woods. But ultimately, I found it to be much less difficult than my fears had led me to believe it would be. So imagine I'm a Christian, right? And even better, I imagine I just became a Christian or like, you know, I was already a Christian, but I just rededicated my life to Christ or whatever. Exactly the kind of thing that Christians might do when they're turning over the kind of leaf that you would turn over right before you quit smoking after 30 years, right? So Christian me prays to mighty Jesus to hold my hand and carry me through this. And, you know, because by golly, only a higher power is strong enough to do it. And then lo and behold, I observe all the same shit that atheist me just observed. Quitting turns out not to be as hard as I thought it would be. But, you know, it's no longer, though, because I was mistaken about the level of difficulty. It's because God was on my side. You know, maybe the godless me could have done it, but he certainly wouldn't have done it. So painlessly praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Of course, in this instance, God didn't actually help me quit smoking. I quit myself and then I gave him all the credit. So what purpose did he serve? Did we just land back on that cynical interpretation we started with? Well, consider this. There are a lot of things that I should do with my life. And most of them are easier than giving up a 30-year nicotine habit. Just demonstrably easier than that, right? Like I, I should give more money to charity. I should volunteer my time. I should eat better. I should exercise more. I should be a better husband. I should get angry at fewer inanimate objects. And if I just prove to myself that I can quit smoking, 
right? Traditionally considered to be one of the hardest damn things a person can be called upon to do. How the fuck can I justify continuing to fuck up all that other stuff? How can I rectify my ability to quit smoking, but my inability to be as attentive as I should be to Lucinda? Well, God sure makes a great excuse, doesn't he? After all, if I quit smoking, not because of my own willpower, but rather because I besieged God and he heard me, well, I don't have to do all this other hard stuff. I, I can't go pestering God every time there's a problem in my life now, can I? Sometimes I got to handle this shit on my own, and I don't have the kind of willpower it takes to quit smoking or quit drinking. I failed at that shit repeatedly. Only God could do that. Look, I'll admit it can be kind of intimidating to realize that something you thought yourself incapable of for a really long time was easier than you thought it would be. What other comfortable limitations are illusory? What else is possible? Don't get me wrong. I'm all for believing in yourself, but if you do it correctly, it can be downright exhausting.